What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again with the all new Samsung Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra and in this video we're going to check out the emulation performance of this massive tablet. So I've already created one video on the Tab S8 Ultra, if you're interested in checking that out I'll leave a link in the description. We tested out a bunch of stuff, ran some benchmarks, native Android games, and a little bit of emulation, but one of the big reasons I love these Samsung tablets is for retro gaming, and the Tab S8 Ultra is the most powerful Android tablet we've ever had the chance to test out on the channel. And in fact, as making this video, it's the most powerful Android tablet on the market right now. Through all of the testing in this video, you'll see this little graph here. This is known as GPU Watch. It's available on the high-end Samsung stuff. You can go into developer options and enable it. I've got it set up right now to show us the FPS, CPU usage, and GPU usage with the graph. You can actually change this up, but I just wanted to mention that in case you saw it on screen and wondered what it was. It's not a third-party app. It's built into this tablet and other high-end Samsung devices. Another thing I'd like to mention here is the Tab S8 does support display over USB Type-C and Samsung DeX. What I have here is a USB Type-C to HDMI adapter. It's actually a powered hub. We also have USB and Ethernet on it. So the way it's set up right now, as soon as I plug in an external display, we're going to get Samsung DeX on that said display. We can also run Android directly on the tablet screen and Samsung DeX at the same time. And like I mentioned, I haven't noticed any performance loss running anything in Samsung DeX. We can also mirror the screen by going in here and turning Samsung DeX off. So in this video, you're going to see me film the screen for a few of these emulators. Then I'm just going to go ahead and plug this into my game capture. It makes it a lot easier for me to capture that footage but we will have our stats on screen so we know what's going on at any given time. We're almost to the emulation section of this video, but first I want to give you a quick rundown on the specs of the Tab S8 Ultra, because for an Android tablet, these are really impressive specs. When it comes to the CPU, this is using the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. It's an octa-core ARM CPU, and the biggest core here is an X2 core up to 3 GHz. The GPU is an Arduino 730. With the Ultra model, you can get it with 8GB of RAM up to 16 and 128GB of internal storage up to 512, but they all support a micro SD card. It's got a big, beautiful 14.6 inch 120Hz Super AMOLED display. I'm going to be running this at 60Hz for emulation. That's really the way it goes. It's got an 11,000 mAh battery, quad speakers, and is running Android 12 with one UI 4.1 right out of the box. When it comes to playing these retro games, you can always use the touchscreen controls, but I personally prefer using a physical controller, and with everything you're going to see running in this video, I'm using an Xbox One controller connected over Bluetooth. We're going to be testing out some Dreamcast, PSP, N64, GameCube, 3DS, we'll also go with some MAME stuff that's a little hard to run on ARM, and some PS2 emulation. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump right into it. So coming out of the gate with some GameCube emulation using the Dolphin emulator, OpenGL backend, 720p, we have Billy Hatcher. And in the newer updates of Dolphin, I noticed that I'm not getting as great performance with this game as I did in the past. Not sure what's going on there, but overall it's definitely a playable frame rate. And we'll test another GameCube one in a second, but uh, let's move over to 3DS with DOA Dimensions. With this here, it uses the OpenGL backend. We're at 3x resolution, and we still got some sound issues going on, and it really comes down to the emulator itself. If you've tried this out, you know you will have some of those dead spots in the sound, but uh, performance at 3x is great on this tablet. The next thing we're going to test here is the arcade version of Killer Instinct, and this might not sound impressive to some people, but if you know what we have here, this is actually really awesome to see it running at 60 FPS on an ARM device. I'm using RetroArch with the main 2010 core, and like I mentioned, this is the arcade version of Killer Instinct, so that Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 can definitely handle main games, and even the harder ones that were really meant to run on x86 CPUs. This was impossible a few years ago to get this to run at full speed, but now on this new chip, we're getting amazing performance. So now I'm just going to move over to my game capture device to make it a little easier on me. We're not using any extra CPU or GPU because this is an external device plugged into a PC. And here we have Dreamcast using the ReDream emulator at 3840 by 2880. It's maxed out resolution in the ReDream emulator and it's definitely a bit overkill for HDMI out on this device or even the built-in screen, but it does work well. Next on the list, we have PS1 using Duck Station at 5x resolution. OpenGL back in, so we're upscaling these PS1 games to 1080p. 
And with some of the easier ones to emulate, like the Spyro games and Crash Bandicoot, we can go a bit higher, but you know, I really don't notice much of a difference over 1080p on the built-in screen or over HDMI. I also wanted to throw some N64 in here. We're using the standalone version of Moopin64 Plus FZ from the Google Play Store. We're at 1920 by 1440 and it's really playable. You might notice it's not running at 60 because that's really not how this emulator works. And originally I wanted to use RetroArch in the Moopin core, but when I try to upscale, it just doesn't upscale. With N64 or even Sega Saturn using Yobasa and Shiro, which we have here, in the settings, I'm set to 720p, but I don't think it upscaled at all. I'm not exactly sure what's going on, and I've been having this issue on Android lately. So uh, until that's fixed, or until I actually know what's going on, I can't do any upscaling with a lot of these emulators in RetroArch. But we're still getting some amazing Sega Saturn performance using Yobasa and Shiro. Moving up a little bit to PSP using the standalone version of PPSSPP, Vulcan back in. Here we have Daxter running at 9x resolution. And uh, yeah, it's not going to make that much of a difference going up to 9x from around 5x due to the built-in screen's resolution, but I still wanted to see how far I could push it. And with this one here, going up to 10x did give me a few dips. But when I moved over to Tony Hawk's Underground 2, even with the 60 FPS patch enabled, I was able to take it up to 10x with that Vulcan back in, no issues at all. Now when it comes to the harder to emulate games like the God of War series or even Midnight Club, you will have to take it down to 5x, but you still got plenty of resolution there for the built-in screen. And in the first video I did on the Tab SA Ultra, I did test out Chains of Olympus, so you can check that out. Link is in the description. Moving back over to GameCube using the Dolphin emulator, here we have one of my favorite games, Automotalista at 1080p using OpenGL. When I swap over to the Vulcan backend, I can only go up to 720p, and I think this comes down to the new updates to the Dolphin emulator, which really pertain to Android devices using Snapdragon CPUs and Arduino GPUs. It really helps out with OpenGL performance. Alright, so now we're moving over to PS2 using EtherSX2. Here's Sly Cooper at 3x resolution. I'm in safe mode from the emulator itself. I don't have any hacks on that I personally turned on from safe mode. And it's working really well, but there are still games that are going to struggle. And that really comes down to emulator optimizations. But as you see here, we are at 3x using OpenGL. And with this, just like the Dolphin emulator, I've been getting much better performance with OpenGL. I've got a few more PS2 games to test, so here's Soul Calibur 3, OpenGL, we're at 2x. So at 3x, got a lot of dips, and every once in a while when there's lots of particle effects on screen, it would dip down to around 24 FPS. But as soon as I dropped it down to 2x, I'm good to go. We're getting really great performance here on the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 and the Samsung Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra. God of War, OpenGL, 2x, really great performance. Again, at 3x, got those dips just like we did with Soul Calibur. Definitely not as low. I mean, it was running at about 54 FPS, which, you know, some people still might be able to deal with. And keep in mind, we're in safe mode. There's still a lot of hacks that we could use in the background, but I personally don't like that frame skip and look. And the last one I tested here was Ratchet & Clank going Commando. Even at 2x with OpenGL or Vulkan, we're still getting some dips, but that's kind of how this game goes. I haven't found a device yet that's going to run this at 60 constantly using EtherSX2. Again, it's still really early for this emulator. It's amazing the way it is, but it's only going to get better as time goes on. So when it comes to emulation on an Android tablet, it's definitely the best one that I've tested so far, and we've went through a lot on this channel, from the Snapdragon 835 in the older Tab S4, up to the 870 in the new Lenovo's and Xiaomi's, but now with this Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, we're getting much better performance than anything else that I've tested on an Android tablet. And even though I have the Ultra version, the regular old Tab S8 with the 11 inch screen still has this same CPU, and you can get it with eight gigs of RAM, you're going to get the same performance that you're seeing here. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in checking out the first video I made on the Tab S8 Ultra, link for that is in the description. And like always, thanks for watching.